thank you for that warm welcome. Kids do amazing things, awe-inspiring things, if you keep it real. They actually can rival what adults do. Let me give you some examples. Martha Payne is a nine-year-old girl who lives in Scotland, and Martha decided to start a blog. Martha takes photographs of her school canteen lunches and uploads them to her blog. Within a few weeks, she had a million views. Currently, she, her blog, Never Seconds, sits at nine and a half million page views. She very quickly got the attention of Jamie Oliver with like minds, wanting better, better nutrition for kids. She also got the attention of her school authorities who tried to shut her down by making a rule she couldn't take a camera to school to photograph her canteen lunches. Martha, though, has also raised £130,000 for food kitchens in Africa through Mary's Kitchen, through the donations she's uh, attracted on her blog. This fellow is Jack Andraker. Jack's 15 and he hails from Maryland in the USA. Jack has actually come up with a paper test strip for the early detection of cancer. His paper test strip reads uh, increased levels in protein and um, leads to an early diagnosis of pancreatic, ovarian and lung cancer. Jack, um, Jack actually was inspired from his uncle's death, or sorry, close family, fr family friend he referred to as an uncle. Uh, and Jack was a bit off task actually in his biology class. Uh, where he should have been paying attention to his teacher's uh, class on antibodies. Jack was actually doing a bit of side reading on carbon uh, nanotubes, as you do, to come up with the, the uh, paper test that is used uh, in, in this early detection. It's far more efficient, effective and cheaper than currently used tests. And these young ladies, a group of six sixth graders from Bowling Green in Kentucky, decided to launch a camera into space. So with the use of a digital camera, widescreen lens, uh, VCR recording, uh, they've also used a weather balloon and a GPS tracking device, launched their uh, camera into space and have photos of the Earth from 22 miles above. And uh, they actually have a website where you can view those photos. The thing about all of these projects that these young people have been involved in and, and done and achieved, none of them were school projects. None of them were assignments set by their teachers. None of them were tasks completed for a mark or a grading. But what if they were? What if we actually expected kids in our schools to do something real? What if we actually set them real problems to solve expected them to design real products, provide community services for real people, and put on performances for real audiences. Real results, real purposes. What if we actually went past pipe cleaners and paddle pop sticks? This is some students from year five prototype in solving the problem. How can we uh, store these new recycling bags that are landing in our classroom in Greysmere many years ago now? But that first slide was their early prototype and there they are leaning on their solution. And the kids did take it past pipe cleaners and paddle pop sticks and work with some family members to manufacture their device. Business ready to happen in Greysmere at the time. And these young students too, year six students from Allenstown, set the task to build a billy cart, something some of you would be very familiar with from your childhood, but not done so often nowadays. And this project actually had a very strong literacy focus. And you can see some of the other designs there. The thing is we actually expect with sport that students would perform 
and, and have a, a culmination that is real. We would think it quite crazy to teach kids skills in the sporting arena, teach them skills and knowledge and never actually have the final event, which would be a game, to test and use what they've learnt. And similarly, in the performing arts, when they're learning an instrument, it's quite expected that there would be a performance. And in fact, those involved in those arenas, or if you've ever watched a child prepare for a sporting event or for a performance, it actually lifts their performance to a whole other level. And yet, so many other subject areas and so many other fields of learning, we just don't seem to pay that much attention or have that level of expectation. The performing arts, <coughs> sorry, the slides are doing funny things. The performing arts, we're not so bad at, particularly in high school. Primary schools um, probably don't put enough time into it, but it's there. And then we get to the visual arts. What if we actually took children's artwork and gave it the respect it deserves? And this here is an exhibition of children's artwork. And we actually credit it to the children like we do to adults. And yes, Abby's dad does have two earrings, as you can see there. What if we actually took history to a place where children are doing research for real purposes and real audiences? And those that are familiar with Allenstown will know that the school, uh, the school's history is its proud tradition. So over four years, from 2006 to 2009, we embarked on a project to have students actively researching and writing and being involved in <coughs> recording the school's history. In 2006, a group of 12 Year 7 students, led by Bill Smith, started with an information evening to get some interest and made a presentation to Robert Schwarten, who became patron for the project. These students wrote letters for support. They started a database of contacts. They um, actually interviewed um, um, previous students and uh, connections with past staff. Here they are looking around the school at some of the historical markers that were in existence to prepare for what was to become the school um, history tour. And here they are with May O'Shaughnessy, who's the wife of a past staff member, Pat O'Shaughnessy. And the students actually prepared for the interview, conducted the interview with May and recorded it. It's now held on the school archives. As well as that, the school enlisted the support of the Queensland coordinator for the Queensland Museum. And she gave advice, not just to the staff, but actually met with students and gave them advice in a report on how to look after the artefacts within the school. So there was a significant process over many years where students were actually forming a database of the artefacts held within the school. Trophies, photographs, they lined the walls, um, and historical documents. In 2007, the project became a part of the curriculum. Three teachers, Helen James, um, Lachlan Spivey and Cathy Smith actually wrote units of work that involved history, uh, English, technology and the arts and taught that as a part of their curriculum for the first part of the year. The students then accessed the school archives and local archives and this particular monument you're looking at is in memory of a teacher who passed away in the 1890s and the class teacher actually found the report from the morning bulletin in the local uh, archives at the library and shared that with the students during a reading comprehension lesson um, and the students were just thrilled with it because there was actually a dog that survived this boating accident even though the teacher was killed. <laughs> And here's an example of some of the, the, um, the, the historical information that the students could tap into. Now, on the school grounds are two of the um, play sheds. 
which are the oldest buildings on site, but they also had access to things like the tender documents. And there was very interesting conversations around how much £100 was worth. And as you can see, the actual architectural plans for the buildings and how what was constructed is actually slightly different to what was planned. The students used all of these uh, to put together reports that went into the guidebook that went with the tour around the school. In 2008, a small group of students continued the work and here they are interviewing a past student, John, uh, John Phillips, who was a student prior to 1951. The students also put out surveys and collated responses and this was added to their research. And here, the students are actually speaking to a reunion group. So these, um, the adults in this, in this photo are actually from um, scholarship year of 1959 and they'd come back for their 50 year reunion. This is an example of the students' work at the conclusion and uh, it's a part of the guidebook. And all of the students, all of the articles, all of the items in the book were actually credited to students. And you can see their uh, acknowledgement at the bottom of each, of each piece. This is the map that takes you around the school. And um, at each point, um, it lines up with the articles in the guidebook, but there's also an iPod tour. So as you booked into the school, you could receive the iPod and audio recordings for each site um, matched up with the guidebook as you worked your way around the school. We also received a grant for um, the Q150, which allowed us to um, set up historical markers. And again, the work here, the text on the actual plaques were written and researched by year six students. And here's an example of one of those. It's for the main building that you're probably familiar with. And if you're not, here's a student's renditions uh, of that building used in all the promotional materials for the tour. The, uh, we held a logo competition and the two uh, pencil drawings were um, successful in the competition. The two photos were actually student photos taken for different reasons. The painting in the middle on the top was a prep student's impersonation, uh, you know, representation of the, the building when they first started prep. And the model on the bottom was also a prep construction as a part of their orientation to the school when they first start school. Imagine a student being assessed on this kind of work. The kind of knowledge, skills, understanding that's gone into producing that sort of quality and how proud they are when they come back in years to come to see that <laughs> still ex in existence on site. And yet we continue to ask students to do things that are irrelevant, uninteresting, what they see is unimportant. And I remember this which was actually created by year five students and they're promoting their school and it's persuasive text. All across our country from the beginning of this year, there would be students in years three, five and seven preparing for NAPLAN, practicing persuasive text. How many of them have written something that powerful for a real audience, for a real purpose, making a real difference where their work is valued by someone other than the teacher. It's seen by someone other, other than the teacher and it's for a greater need than just a mark on a paper. And into the future, these young students, Cody and Tracy, a current project underway, these students are actually starting to write an iBook ready to load onto iTunes and it will be promoting our school to new students in the sense of what it means to come to school and how it is. Thank you. <laughs>